Hello class, this is Mr. Sutton, and today we're going to be doing our first lesson on trigonometry. So that's intro to trigonometric functions slash ratios and finding missing side lengths using trigonometry. So first we are going to determine where trig functions come from using similar right triangles. So when we're using these trig functions, it has to be uh, with right triangles and the reason it has to be with right triangles is because they have to be similar to each other. And with right triangles, we already know we have one angle similar. Uh, so then we have to have one other angle similar. And we usually use the variable or the Greek letter theta for that, which looks like this. And that's what we use as our variable. Uh, so if these have the same angle here, this is called the reference angle. So we call this the reference angle. Um, so these two triangles have this same reference angle, then that means they have two angles congruent already. So that means we can say they're similar by angle angle. And so if they are similar by angle angle, that means all of their side lengths are proportional. So just like we did with the special right triangles where we figured out like any triangle with the 30, 60, 90 degree angle uh, must be proportional to each other. Uh, we can expand that to any right triangle. So any right triangle with this degree theta, let's say it's 15 degrees, they must all be proportional to each other. So if we know those ratios, then we can figure out side lengths here. So um, kind of the language we use for the side lengths, um, we base it based off the reference angle we're talking about. So the hypotenuse is always going to be the hypotenuse. The side opposite the reference angle, so opposite, that is the opposite side, and that's what we call it. And then the other side touching the reference angle that's not the hypotenuse is called the adjacent side. Adjacent meaning it's touching it. So there are three different ratios we're going to talk about um, in our intro to trigonometry lesson. There's more ratios that you'll learn more about in trigonometry and if you continue on in math, but these are the three most basic ones. And that's opposite over hypotenuse, so this side over this side, then adjacent over hypotenuse, so this side over this side, and opposite over adjacent, so this side over this side. So now, like we said, any right triangle with the same reference angle, they have to be similar to each other, so that means they have to have the same ratios. All three of these ratios have to be the same, even if they're different sizes. Uh, the ratios have to be the same. They'll simplify to the same thing. So what the people who came up with trigonometry decided is we should come up with some functions that can tell us what those ratios are. So, and the words they use for this is sine, cosine, and tangent for these three functions. And so this is how you actually spell those words, sine, S-I-N-E, cosine, C-O-S-I-N-E, and tangent, T-A-N-G-E-N-T. Uh, so it's not sin, cos, tan, that's just the abbreviation for the function notation. Um, so basically, it's a function, just like you learned in algebra, like f of x, equals something right uh, but this time it is the sine of theta whatever this angle measure is equals this ratio opposite over hypotenuse so this would be our input and this is our output and then the cosine of whatever that angle measure is is adjacent over hypotenuse, it's that ratio. The tangent of whatever that angle measure is, is this ratio, opposite over adjacent. 
So to kind of connect this idea to our special right triangles, for example, if you did the sine of 30 degrees, so sine of 30 degrees, 30 degrees is our reference angle, that would be opposite over hypotenuse, so that the sine of 30 degrees is 1 over 2. If you did the cosine of 30 degrees, that is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be root 3 over 2. So we are plugging in the angle measure, in this case 30 degrees, and out comes our specific ratio for whatever function we're using, sine, cosine, or tangent. Okay, so make sure you have this in your notes. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about it in a moment. So you want to make sure you have these three functions in your notes uh, so that you can reference them when you are doing your practice and when you're doing your mastery. Uh, but these three functions are probably not things that you are going to be able to memorize uh, easily off the top of your head right away. Uh, maybe after some practice, you will have them memorized. Uh, but if not, there is a nice little mnemonic device that you can use to help you memorize these, and that is SOKATOA. All right, so where this comes from is S for sign is opposite over hypotenuse so sine is opposite over hypotenuse and then c for cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse a h t for tangent is opposite over adjacent o a so sine is opposite over hypotenuse cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse tangent is opposite over adjacent right and so you can come up with your own story on who Sokotoa is. Uh, it's a very Native American sounding name. So you can come up with your own story on who this is and their relationship to geometry, trigonometry. That is up to you um, to help you memorize this. But that is the mnemonic that is very popular that people use to memorize these trig functions. So make sure you have this in your notes. Uh, this will help you memorize and remember these trig functions and ratios. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into some examples. So this first example in triangle BCD, the measure of angle D is 90 degrees. So we have a right triangle. That means we can use these trig functions. Uh, the measure of angle B is 71 degrees, so that's our reference angle here. And DB equals 67 feet, so that must be the adjacent side. I'm just going to say ADJ because it is touching the 71 degree angle, but it's not the hypotenuse. So this is the hypotenuse, I'm just going to use that HYP, uh, meaning this side over here is the opposite side, OPP because it's opposite from the reference angle. So we want to find the length of BC to the nearest tenth of a foot. So first thing you want to do is what I did is label your sides. So this is our reference angle, opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. Next thing you want to do is figure out which ratio you are using. Uh, so here we're using the adjacent and hypotenuse side sides because we're given the adjacent side and we're trying to find the hypotenuse so we want to determine which function uses adjacent and hypotenuse out of the ones we are given so that would be cosine cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse so we know that our angle here is 71 so we're going to say cosine 
of 71, that's our input, 71 degrees. And we know our adjacent side is 67, and our hypotenuse is what we're looking for, that is x. So now, at this point, you might be wondering, how do I solve this? How do I find what x is? What do I do here? Good news is your calculator knows exactly what cosine of 71 is. It knows all of these trig ratios um, and trig functions. It knows exactly what they are. So first thing you want to do is get your calculator and then make sure that you are in degrees mode. So there should be a button on your calculator. Well, first make sure your calculator has the sine cosine tangent buttons. If not, you might need to use the internet, find an internet calculator. Um, but then make sure you go to mode and then you should see options like DEG and RAD. You want to be in DEG mode, that is degrees. Um, and you can go ahead and type in cosine 71 and enter, and that 0 0.32556815, that is exactly what this ratio is for the adjacent and hypotenuse sign. 3, 2, 5, 5, 6, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's not what we're trying to find. We're trying to find x. So we want to go ahead and rearrange this equation here before we put anything into our calculator. So to do that, I'm going to multiply by x on both sides so that we'll have x times cosine of 71 equals 67. And then I want to divide by this cosine of 71 on both sides. So then I have x equals 67 divided by cosine of 71. That is what we want to type in our calculator. Again, you want to make sure you're in degrees mode. Uh, so you want to type in 67 divided by and maybe you want to use parentheses here, cosine 71, and then press enter. So you should get x is approximately 205.7940836. We want to round to the nearest tenth of a foot. So this is the tenth place right here. So we would say x is approximately 205.8. Feet. So you want to make sure you're typing that in your calculator correctly. 67 divided by the cosine of 71 in order to get this correct answer, because uh, you do have to be exact on this. Delta math is only going to accept 205.8. So if you have any questions about that, make sure you're talking to your teacher about how to type this into your calculator. Uh, this one, next example here, we have in triangle QRS, the measure of angle S is 90 degrees, so it's a right triangle. The measure of Q, angle Q is 71 degrees, so that's our reference angle. And RS is 2.5 feet. And we want to find the length of SQ to the nearest tenth of a foot. So here's our reference angle. So this side here has to be the opposite angle or opposite side, excuse me. This is the adjacent side because it is connected to our reference angle, but it is not the hypotenuse. This has to be the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle here. So first you wanna label your sides. Next thing you wanna do is figure out which trig function you're using. So we have 2.5 and X here, so that's opposite and adjacent. So we got to figure out which trig function uses opposite and adjacent. So that would be tangent. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so we know theta, our angle, what we're plugging into our function is 71 degrees. 
We know the opposite side is 2.5. And we know the adjacent side is x. So since we know all of those things, and since tangent of 71 is something we can plug into our calculator, we can go ahead and try to solve this. So multiply by x on both sides. And you should get x times tangent of 71 degrees equals 2.5. And then we want to get x by itself. So we divide by tangent 71 on both sides. So x equals 2.5. divided by a tangent 71. So this is what we plug into our calculator, 2.5 divided by a tangent of 71. So when you plug that in, you should get 0 0.860819033. Kind of a weird answer. Um, so we wanna make sure this makes sense. Uh, we have, this side is 2.5 and then this would be a smaller side than that. So 2.5 is already pretty small. This side has to be smaller here because it's opposite the smaller angle. So 0 0.86 actually does make sense here. Um, so that checks out. Uh, and then we want to round this to the nearest tenth of a foot. So again, this is the tenth, tenth place. So that would actually be 0 0.9 because we round up because of the six. So 0 0.9 feet. All right. Let's look at one more example here. In triangle DEF, the measure of angle F is 90 degrees. So right triangle, the measure of angle D is 58 degrees. And DE equals 42 feet. Find the length of EF to the nearest tenth of a foot. So first thing we want to do is label our sides. Our reference angle is here, our 58 degree angle. So 42 is the hypotenuse. It's opposite the right angle. This side is the adjacent side because it's the other side that makes up that angle. And then... This side that we're looking for is the opposite side because it's opposite our reference angle. So next thing we want to do is figure out which trig function we're using. Um, so if we know the hypotenuse and we're trying to find the opposite side, we want to use the trig function that uses opposite and hypotenuse. So that would be sine of theta because that equals opposite over hypotenuse. So we know theta, our angle measure is 58. We know the opposite side is x, that's what we're looking for. And we know the hypotenuse is 42. So we want to rearrange this to get x by itself on one side. This type is actually easier when x is in the numerator than the last two examples we did. Uh, for these, all you have to do is uh, is multiplied by 42 on both sides. Just multiply by the denominator here, is then we have 42s cancel out, and you have 42 times sine of 58 equals x. So we already have x by itself on one side, so less steps to solve. And also I think these are easier to plug in the calculator as well. You just take 42 and then multiply by sine of 58. And you should get x is approximately 35.61802004, which rounded to the nearest tenth would be 35.6 feet as your final answer. So those are your examples for finding missing sides using trig functions and ratios. So if you have any questions about this, make sure you are going to office hours, asking your teacher for help. Uh, have a good day.